In this video series, we will be talking about digital logic and try to understand how CPUs perform numerical computations. Uh, now, of course, CPUs of today are very, very complicated, uh, and then they can contain up to 7 billion transistors, highly complicated items, but the idea behind them uh, is actually fairly simple. and by the end of this video series, you will have a basic idea how these computations are performed. All logic, all of these CPUs are made up of logic gates, basically. Here I've shown you a couple, or three of them. NOT gate, a NOT gate is basically which outputs the opposite of the input. A NAND gate op outputs a zero when both the inputs are high. And the NOR gate here shown outputs a zero when either one of the input is logically high and you can actually now see the circuit that i will be using to demonstrate the implementation of these gates so all of these gates are actually implemented using something called a transistor you might have actually heard that the transistor the invention of the transistor has allowed all of this infrastructure digital infrastructure that we have around us. But how does it fundamentally work? So, it, so the way that it works is that this thing is basically a voltage control switch. So think of it like this. We have a voltage source here between this point and this point. And if a certain voltage exceeds, is exceeded, this thing is a switch that closes. So when the voltage is low, this is like an open connection there's nothing and when you actually have a certain voltage you can think of this as a uh, continuous connection the basic principle using this basic principle you can make all kinds of logic gates and with the logic gates you can make uh, any kind of logic any kind of cpus gpus or other uh, integrated circuits so here in this video, I actually show you uh, the three gates, but implemented using real components, real transistors. Here in this case, we have the N MOS transistor. And in the circuit that we will actually show, I will show you in later, we are using BS170 transistor. And you can make the same circuits that I'm making by using pretty much any uh, N MOS transistor. So how does this thing work? This is an inverter, which means that if the voltage here is high, if the voltage here is, for example, one, the output must be zero. So remembering what we learned about transistors, if the voltage here is zero, this thing is like an open circuit. So we can ignore this part. This part doesn't exist. The only thing that is relevant to the circuit or is this, this part. So since, uh, no current is actually flowing here. Let's say that minimal current is actually flowing. The voltage at this point is the same as the voltage at this point because as we know that uh, V is equal to I R and since this current is zero, this voltage is also zero. So this voltage across this resistor is zero. So this voltage is the same as this voltage. And if this was, for example, five volts, the output will also be 5 volts. So we know that in case the input is 0, the output is 1. Good so far. The other thing we need to know is what will happen if the input is 1 and we expect the output to be 0. So let's see again, let's simulate this again. Let's say the voltage here was 5 volts. Again, remembering from what we learned in this case, this will be like a short. So this voltage will be connected here. Now, since this voltage is, of course, uh, you know, the same voltage as ground, and ground is zero, we will see that the voltage here will also be zero. So this is the uh, NOT gate. In the NAND gate, what we actually expect is that in case both inputs are one, the output will be zero. In any other case, the output will be one so let's see here in case uh, actually any of these things are uh, 
let's say zero either either one of them or both of them are zero again the circuit looks like this case so it's this is disconnected which is the same situation as we saw before and of course in this case we will have this thing one the only case when this is actually connected here is when both of the switches are open and the both of the switches are open when both this volt and both this voltage is high so this is our NAND gate similarly we let's talk about the NOR gate and here we can see uh, the same idea applies but we have a connection to ground when either A or B are high so logically high so uh, in this case we will have something like this in case of 0 1 1 0 or 1 1 we will have 0 0 0 and in case this is 0 0 we will have logic 1 so now what we can do is look at this, implement the same circuits that I've been, uh, shown you here on the breadboard. Okay, so here we have our circuit and we have implemented all three gates that I showed you in the video before. This is the NOT gate, so it's an inverter. This one is the NOR gate, which means that in case either one of them are logically high, this will be zero. This is an AND gate. This works in case both of them are high, then and only then does this become logically zero. So let's start with checking our inverter. Let's turn this off. Let's turn everything off. And let's look at our inverter. In our inverter, this is the input to it. And this represents the input signal. Right now we see that the input is logically low and the output is indeed inverted and it is logically high. When I turn this on to make the input logically high, you would expect this to go uh, to zero. So let's try that. And we can see that indeed that is the case. As, as I turn this off, you see the LED switch. So this is inverted. Perfect, this, is, this works fine. Now let's take a look at our uh, NOR gate. In our NOR gate, what we expect is in case any one of the input is logically high, you will see the output will go to zero. So let's try the first input. So we saw the first input made it turn off. Turn off. Let's try the other one. Okay, this one is on and you can see this is off. And let's try both of them. So again, if I try both of them, again we see that this turns off so this is also working as expected and finally you can see uh, this one which is actually the uh, NAND gate and for the NAND gate case we expect this to only turn off when both inputs are actually logically high so let's try one of them the first one so we saw ignore this by the way you already seen this so the first one nothing happened this is on still on Let's try the other one. We turn this on, again this remains high, but as soon as we turn both on, this goes low. So our NAND gate is also working function, uh, functioning properly. In the next video, I will make uh, a small, I mean, a memory unit using only two transistors. And once we will have that, we will have all of the required things that are needed to make a very basic uh, calculator where we can add binary numbers.